Welcome to the Neuralink Show and Tell. So we've got uh, an amazing amount of new uh, developments to share with you that I think are incredibly exciting, as well as tell you about the future of what we're planning to do here. It's, uh, and now this is meant to be a technical podcast, or sort of like a, we're, 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 I'm, I'm going to provide an overall summary, um, and then we're going to have a number of members of the, the Neuralink team come in and give a, a deep technical overview of the various areas. So uh, yeah, so let me move forward with the, the overall summary. Now some of the things I'm going to say are things you've, well, if you've been following Neuralink, you've already heard before. But uh, for, for a lot of people out there, they've no idea what Neuralink does. And so I will be a little bit rep repetitive of things you may already know, but that others do not. So um, the, the, overall, the overarching goal of Neuralink is to create a, uh, ultimately a whole brain interface. So uh, a, a, a generalized input-output device that in, you know, in the long term, literally could interface with uh, every aspect of your brain. And in the short term, uh, can, ask, can interface with uh, any given section of, of your brain and, and uh, solve a, tr a tremendous number of things that, that uh, cause de debilitating issues for people. So, uh, you know, so our, our long term is, I'd like, I'll, I mean, I'll talk a little bit about a long term goal. Uh, it's going to sound a little esoteric, but it's the, it, it was actually the, sort of my, my prime motivation, which was, you know, kind of what, what, what do we do about AI? Like, what do we do about artificial general intelligence? Uh, if, if we have digital super intelligence that's, you know, just much smarter than any human, how do we mitigate that risk? Um, at, a, at a species level, how do we mitigate that risk? Um, and then even in a benign scenario where the AI is uh, very, very benevolent, um, then how do we even go along for the, go along for the ride? How do we, we participate? Um, and the, I mean, the conclusion, I, the, the, the thing that, the, the biggest limitation in going along for the ride and in aligning uh, AI, I think is the is the, the bandwidth, the, the how quickly you can interact with the computer. So we are we are uh, all already cyborgs, in a way, in that the, your your phone and your computer are extensions of yourself. And if you, I'm sure you found like if you uh, leave your phone behind, uh, you you find, end up tapping your pockets and and it's like having missing limb syndrome. Like where, you know, the, the phone is, it is, leaving your phone behind is kind of like a missing limb at this point. You're so used to interfacing with it. You're so used to being a de facto cyborg. Um, but, but so, so what's the limitation on, on, a, on a phone or a, a laptop? The limitation is the, the rate at which you can receive and send information, especially the, 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 the speed with which you can send information. So if you're interacting with a phone, it's limited by the speed at which you can move your thumbs uh, or the, the speed at which you can talk into your phone. This is an extremely low data rate. Um, you know, maybe it's like 10, optimistically 100 bits per second, but a computer can, can communicate at uh, you know, gigabits, ter terabits per second. So this is the fundamental limitation that I think we need to address to mitigate the long-term risk of artificial intelligence um, and also just go along for the ride. And uh, yeah. So, but like I said, that's, that's, that, that's an esoteric explanation that I think uh, will ap appeal to a niche audience, um, uh, some of whom may be here. Um, uh, but, uh, and, and that's, a, that's a very difficult problem. So even if we do not succeed with that problem, I think we, 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 like we are confident at this point that we will succeed at many, uh, it's, it's solving many brain injury uh, issues, spine injury issues along the way. So, um, yeah, so, anyways. <laughs> so, uh, actually we have uh, Justin Roiland in the audience. Uh, this is, uh, hi Justin. 
So it's a little Rick and Morty reference here. Um, the uh, there's a great Rick and Morty episode about intelligence enhancement of your dog, and uh, what's the worst that could happen? So uh, anyway, I, Rick and Morty, I recommend it. <laughs> um, so for, for so you want to be able to read the signals from the brain. You want to be able to to write the signals. Uh, uh, you want to be able to ultimately do that for the entire brain um, and then also extend that to uh, communicating to the rest of your nervous system if there's a if you have a, a, a sort of a severed spinal cord or neck so uh, now this is a this, this video is now 18 months old so this is um, pager uh, who is playing uh, Monkey mind pong. So, this is a pager has a neural link implant in this video, um, and the, the thing that's interesting is that you you can't you can't even see the the neural implant. Um, so it's the it's we've miniaturized the neural implant to the po point where it, it matches the the thickness of the skull that is removed. So it's essentially the it's sort of like having an Apple Watch or a Fitbit, uh, re replacing a piece of skull with like a, you know, a smartwatch, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better uh, analogy. Um, so, uh, so you can see, you can really can't, it, it, he looks pretty, he's normal. But, um, and I think that's pretty important. If you have a Neuralink device, like I could have a Neuralink device uh, implanted right now, and you wouldn't, <laughs> You, you wouldn't even know. I mean, <laughs> hypothetically, <laughs> I, maybe one of these demos, in fact, one of these demos I will. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so, so here's, here's a, I mean, f first of all, like, it's kind of wild, hey, monkeys can play Pong. Like, uh, they can actually play Pong if you give them a joystick. Uh, so Pedro first learned to play Pong with, with a joystick, so I'm like, that was novel. And it's like, I didn't know monkeys could play Pong, but they can. Um, and then, uh, so we first trained P Pedro to play Pong with a joystick, then we took the joystick away and have the, the neural link. And now, this is, he's playing telepath, it's a te tele telepathic video games, essentially. Um, so what we've been doing since then is uh, we've been on the, the very difficult journey from prototype to product. Uh, and I've often said that prototypes are easy, production is hard. Um, it's really, I'd say, a hundred to a thousand times harder to go from, to go from a prototype to a device that is uh, safe, reliable, works under a wide range of circumstances, is affordable, um, and done at scale. It's, it's insanely difficult. Um, I mean, there's an old saying that, you know, that it's 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration, but I think it might be 99%, 99.9% perspiration. Um, you know, the best example I could give of an idea being easy, but the execution being hard, is going to the moon. It's uh, the idea of going to the moon, Easy. Going to the moon, very hard. <laughs> so, um, and uh, we've been working hard to uh, be ready for our first human, and obviously be, we want to be extremely careful uh, and certain that, that it will work well before putting a device in a human, but we're, we've submitted, I think, most of our paperwork to the FDA, and we're, we're, we think probably in about six months we should be able to have our first neural link in a human. So.